Okay, right, so now we're around to the uh, the main composting bays, if you like. And I want to extend these, as I've already said, um, by bringing this one out. And the beauty of having them wired together is that you can do what I've just done, which is basically take the wires apart and then you can just pull these away. So, and as I do that, we're going to be able to see how it's getting on. Oh, and obviously pallets aren't the easiest things to move around, but there we go. So we take that one to there. I'm going to move this one around and get him in line with the one on the back, like so. And then wire him in. Which I'll show you in a second. Now, on top of here are the cuttings from the elder that I pruned back a few weeks back. And obviously it's dying down. But I'll put that on the base of this just to keep it up and keep some air going through there as it, as it rots down. So I'll do that in a, in a, in a little while. So the idea is, is to get this wired in. Um, let's get some wire. And the other great thing about doing it this way is you can reuse the wire when you take it off. We'll get the first one lined up as best as we can. And again, it doesn't have to be absolutely bang on perfect. Taking on the side of there. I'll just do this as a temporary fix and come back to it properly in a second because I want you to see how the compost is looking. So the idea is, like I say, is to put that one there and then this pallet that's here is going to come across. Um, so I need two of those. There'll be one there. I have another one there. And then I've got to work out the door. But that's pretty straightforward, as you'll see in a while. So let's get close up to this compost and you get a better idea of how it's getting on. Pick you, pick you up so you can see. So there you go. And if you look down, again, you can see that white um, fungi that's there. So this is the edge of the of the bed itself. And like I say, we've had some rain, so that's why that's looking pretty wet. Coming across to the front, it's a bit dry, and certainly dry in that left-hand corner there. So the idea now is, like I say, is to um, put these pellets together, and then I can um, split that down a little bit, get some more air into it, and then from there, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving the compost that's in that side across into the new bay here. So we're turning it to get more air in and obviously generate some more heat. The good thing about its position is that we're facing east in that direction. So when the sun comes up, it does get some heat here um, and it will naturally heat this thing up as, as the warmer weather comes back to us. So that is the next stage of this particular job. So I shall crack on with it now. Okay, so I've managed to get these two, or three, sorry, pallets wired together. Fairly stable, he says. And what I want to do now is just break this up a bit. I can see that it's quite wet, and I'm not surprised because this has had no cover for the last few weeks. Um, and so obviously the rain's got in and it's made it quite hard as it's compacted down and rotted down. Having said that, coming into the middle of this, it's um, fairly dry. And I'm also seeing, let's see if I can get that with a pitchfork. There's some mould establishing itself. Yeah, actually, as I'm getting into it now, I'll pick the camera up in a second and you'll, you'll get a better idea. 
the principle is exactly the same as the Dalek, but obviously on a much bigger scale. Because I want to be as self-sufficient with compost as I possibly can be here. It's an expensive thing to have. So if you can make your own, then you're saving a fortune, but also you know what's in it. Um, I'm just going to pop that up there. We'll pick up the camera. We'll get into this a bit more. So there you go. That is quite dry. I'm in the centre of the of the heap, but it's also got a lot of this mycelium type fungi growing in there. And actually, if you get close up to there, you can actually see some fungi growing. And also here. Now that happened in the tunnel when I put this same manure. You can see some grass seeds beginning to germinate in there as well. It's the same uh, delivery that I had. So I'm not surprised to see that in there, as I said before. But it's looking pretty good. So I want to get this fairly level. By doing that, it's going to get a bit more air in here, as I've said. And you can, like I say, you can see the differences with the dry. And I want to get a bit of moisture on that dryness to keep it going. Um, and then from there, I can turn my attentions to this side and turn that into this area and seal it up so I shall crack on okay so I've turned over a little bit of that heap on the right hand side of here and the next job now is to start to move this across but I am aware that we do have some mices in this um, main heap. Oh, that's heavy. Let's just pop that around here for a second. Then up against that. Right, okay. So, you know, I don't want to upset the poor little things. And apart from that, I don't want the dog and the cat in there. So, the idea is, this is a metal, obviously a metal door. And it came from the front of the house when we first moved here before the renovations this was actually on the door to this was the door to our wood burning room boot room dog walking room whatever you want to call it um it's very heavy um but the great thing about it is because it's metal when the sun gets on that it gets quite warm and radiates the heat into this heap so what i want to do is because I don't want to upset the mice. I don't think there's any in there. Well, certainly not this bit because it's quite chilly today. So my plan is to do the big reveal. So I'm going to slide this across. Oh, jeepers. That is heavy. And if the lady of the house will be doing this, she'd probably be saying, why are you doing that on your own? But the thing is, she ain't here to help me. So I should just crack on. Anyway, it's good exercise, isn't it? That's what I say. So come on. Sorry about the sound effects. That door is a heavy door. Probably why it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. So we've got the polystyrene on the top. As you can see, and you've probably seen before. And if you look at the structure of that, that is rotting down quite well so I'm quite happy with that now the idea is I mean I've got polystyrene on there because to keep the heat in but come on it's not going to keep that much heat in is it so what I'm going to do is pop these in here for now and give the chance of any animals in there to somewhere else I'm just reading the temperatures there and it is showing 50 Fahrenheit which is I'm trying to read it to get the thing out it's easier <laughs> 10 degrees Celsius yeah about 50 Fahrenheit so I'm not expecting great things but like I say I'm gonna pop that in there See if I can get the eye. Can't reach that far in. Shows you how deep these bays are. I think I 
and whip him out of there. These polystyrene sheets, I got them because I saw a video on how to make a, make a hot box. And I thought, oh, that's a good idea. So I'll do that. Didn't work because the insulation material or the polystyrene kept the cold in. So it didn't, didn't do much. And when it did get to temperature, the mice went and lived in it. So I, when I did dig it out, yeah, all right, I got some, but it wasn't worth doing it. Jack and Rada liked it when I dug it out. They were catching all the mice running around the ground. Anyhow, let's have a quick look in here. And again, you can see, let's change the angle a little bit. Now that is rotting down. See, I've still got some grass cuttings there from uh, my last cutting that I did. That's on the edge, but if you look inside a bit closer, it's all gone. I've got a lot of that white stuff again, which is great. And there's the wood ash that I threw on there the other day. So leave this for a couple of days now, and then what I shall do is transfer it across to its new home, which is here. Probably find another way of insulating this a bit better. And then I can move these roof sheets across as well to keep the moisture in. I'm not going to be using this bay until I start collecting quite a bit of general garden waste. So the dialects are for the house and this is for the garden basically. Okay so we'll leave that for a day or so. Like I say I'm not losing any heat because there's none in there and um, I'll get that filled up and that'll be an update for another video. Okay, what else have I got to do? Um, nothing for today. So I'm going to wrap up for the rest, rest of this session, as they say. Go and dry my gloves out. And um, have a cup of tea. Okay, in the meantime, if you've enjoyed watching this, um, I'm pleased. I don't know unless you give me a thumbs up. So if you do that, I get more of an idea. In the meantime, take care. And I'll catch up with you very, very soon.